It is indeed. We're back in zeros on the GL so that everything's tying out. We also need to go to the subsidiary ledger because we hit the accounts receivable again. So we got to know who owes us the money so we can call them and hassle them daily until they pay us what they owe us. So all the way to the right. Let's say this happened for the customer one this time on 415. Customer, they already owe us $1,000 whatever az5 az5 we shouldn't sell them anything else till they pay us pay us i feel like so there's the 1400 <clears throat> so now it increased from 1000 by 1400 to 2400 adding up then all of the four customers that owe us money now except that last one doesn't owe us any money anymore but that adds up to the 3400 where it should be uh Matching the trial balance indicated by the green zero. Let's check it out. 3,400. Is that what's on the TB? It is. <clears throat> okay, so then we got the receive payment. We're going to do the same thing as we did here because now we have this, re this receivable amount. We're imagining they're going to pay us. But this time we're going to say, hey, look, they're going to pay us with cash or something like that. I don't want to put it directly into the checking account. Because if I put it directly into the checking account, then it's not going to match up on my books to the groupings that's actually going to go into the bank account. Because I'm going to group these deposits differently when I go to, to the actual bank and deposit them into the bank. And this is something, again, in normal accounting, like if you were to learn, use debits and credits, you wouldn't have these two accounts. Oftentimes, they would just call it cash. And therefore, you don't have this issue of, well, am I holding on to the cash or is it a check? Or do I have to group? But in practice, you, all, you always want to be thinking, once it hits the checking account, is it hitting the checking account in the same format as the bank will be hitting the